And here we are for the final game of BlackBerry vs. National Instruments in week two of the After Hours Gaming League. This may be the final game, but it's not the final scoring game. That happened a long time ago. But we were here to have fun, and we were promised five games, so we are having them. And this fifth game is going to be a uh, ZVP on Ultrazim Stronghold. You can already see National Instruments won the mana race with the first GLHF, but... Blackberry counters with more mana a bit later. I don't know, that's a bit of a toss-up. You'll still have to decide who wins, is it? Spawning in the lower left-hand location for Team Blackberry, we have Asal, the Blue Zerk. And up in the top left location for Team National Instruments, we have the Red Protoss, Solid Luck. And so far... We're not seeing anything exciting. This is a terrible map to six pull on. Such an easily defended ramp. And the only hope of such early aggression usually is that you can keep them on one base for a little longer. But hey, they have a spare base in the back. Just not a good early aggression map. Despite two of the best early aggression races, really. Uh, two is in, the best is in. They're, they're both in the top three races for early aggression in this game. You know, this is supposed to be some great casting practice, casting all the Blackberry games, and so far, I must admit, ha it has been great casting practice. I've already made the mistake of leaving the splash screen up for the entire game. That's a mistake I'm not going to do again. Not if I have to cast this game a second time as punishment. That's really going to linger in my mind. The quick, fast uh, expand is not what's lingering in my mind. You'll actually see that from both players. It's just what to do on this map. And it's going to be very hard to punish, at least for Zerg, because they'll get that wall up in time to stop anything other than a 10-pool. And of course, if a 10-pool is held off anyways, which they can do if they're good, <clears throat> you've taken a, gotten a later expansion. Quite hard to recover from at times. So yeah, the Forge. You know, if he was really metagaming, he might have even skipped the Forge. But best not to go that far into a fast expand. <clears throat> and you'll see the gateway is next. And not not saving up for some sort of rush cannon. Doesn't feel the need for a complete wall off. Spawning pool. Not even done yet. In fact, since we are casting from replay, I'll give you a hint as to why I'm playing this game. It's very hard to cast at the same time. We can actually speed this up a bit. Pivotal moments, like this Overlord getting there, are still some ways away. There we go. So now we've seen the fast expand. Not much happening there. Actually, a bit of action in the initial six slings. Not a ten pool. This is just some early scouting and pressure, and when you've got nothing walling off, they might actually be able to do some pressure. Very spread out, though. Gives that cannon a chance to actually take some out. And of the six slings that went in, only three get to the probe line. They need to get a lot of pros. Let's watch the count go up. It's at one. It's at two. It's at three. Oh, there we go. Three probes for six lings plus full scouting. I think this is a very nice advantage to Ace Alanch and get something out of these early Zerglings. And more probe kills. Is he going to get even more probe kills? Maybe not. Does he need them? And now it's the battle of the waypoints. He has queued up attack orders. They have queued up move orders. That lead them right past the cannon. Now isn't that a little silly? Stalker pops out as well. Easily. Easily pushes that out. And so now it's the classic uh, PVZ. Two base versus three base. We've got the evolution chambers coming up here. Everyone's just looking for a later stage in the game. So let's head up on over there as fast as we can. Just some more scouting lanes. I don't expect them to do much. And there they go. They find that the third's about to go down. They get into the probe. Poor laying a zealot. Try some micro, just can't do it against Stalker. 28 hit points. 
not that far off. Of course, we missed the Oracle. Escaping down here with a single hit point and one kill. That was a queen over here. Not really anything that could be done by that Oracle. Spores and queens were in position. As we saw earlier, the Lizard Wings in the base just scouted everything. Extra Spore Crawlers coming up now. That one kill appears to have struck fear into the hearts of some of our players. And Hydralisks. Given that the upgrade started long before the Oracle, it's probably not a reactionary move. You know, Zergling Hydralisk can be a very good combination uh, against uh, Protoss who doesn't yet have Colossi. Really, Colossi are the main thing to deal with both of those units. Uh, you can't say that Zealots... Zealots, those are alright against both of those units, certainly, but you can't say that Zealots really deal with them. Zealots versus Lings and Hydras really just depends who has more stuff, and usually the Zerg has more stuff because of those three bases. If we look at the economy, though, we do have an excellent <clears throat> macro from our Protoss player. Workers, only 10 behind. Army supplies significantly um, ahead, too. Of course, that could change in any moment. That is the nature of the beast. And yeah, still not really working on army. We're just getting more drones. We're getting some follow-ups to the oracles over here, the Void Ray. Third base, the cute little wall in here around this cannon. Might not do much against Hydralis, but certainly will do a lot against Zerglings. There's the Mothership Core there, ready to turn that into a second turret. We have a fairly defensible third here uh, on Alphazine Stronghold. But when is it going to be under attack? Only just now, or Hydralis starting to be made? Might be trying to create some sort of time, uh, attack while the third base is still kicking up into Ikami for the Protoss player. Good work. In the meantime, our Protoss player just massing up those Void Rays. Really, nothing else you need to do in this game. We've got second Stargate coming up for extra Void Ray. And these Zealous uh, Sentry provide something on the ground. Actually, you can't just mass Void Rays. Mass Void Rays versus Mass Hydralis gives an easy win to the Zerg player uh, if the Void Rays are alone and aren't exploiting the um, terrain or something. But you add some Sentries, some Zealots, you've got a nice gateway army underneath that gives you much more potential to really do some damage here. And the Hydras are moving out on their own. I guess the Lings will have to catch up. The Lings are faster. These Hydras do have the speed upgrade, so it's not like they're as slow as every other unit. Still, not that fast. The fast Zealots. Zealots have no charge just yet. And we'll see. Hydras taking a detour, probably waiting for their friends to catch up. Just Hydras, not great. The thing about Zerg unit compositions is, despite the lack of abilities, no Zerg unit really works well massing on its own. You can always, as Protoss, mass Void Rays, Terran just mass Marines. That always works. But no, Zerg can't really mass any one unit. Hydras alone, just not enough tank. You can see even the Nexus cannons getting kills there. Already lost one Hydralisk, and there's just nothing to tank for these guys. Not a good time to engage. We only need to wait for those Zerglings to come over. But they're all the way across the map. Is he going to engage here? Not really. But the force fields do trap a Hydralis. That's good. Just picking off Hydras one by one. No real losses. The Protoss yet. And if there was some sort of time before the third base kicked in, it's, it's probably going to be a bit too late here, actually, because the army just isn't assembled until now. And now is it big enough? We've got all these Hydralis at home. Just a massive map, and it's taking so long to get the army across. But we are great surround there by the Zerglings. Getting a lot of Zealots, a lot of damage there. And the Hydras moving forward into range of the Nexus can. I don't quite get that. Moving moving back out. Lost some Hydras, mostly Zerglings, so that's not too bad. However, only killing Zealots, not too great either. Really feel like even engagement on both sides. Nothing decisive except the Protoss managed to keep his third base. And he's building even more Void Rays. Now we've got virtually no Zerglings on top of these Hydras. But they're going to back out there. Quite sensible. Not really sure why uh, he's pressuring with his small army. It's, it's going to be fairly easy for Solid Luck to defend against that. Maybe he's just waiting for this reinforcements. A lot more Hydras again. No tank. So Hydras count increases. The army does get scared. Oh, because of that high opposition. On the move, man. Just wants, doesn't want to engage. But he's lost a lot of Hydras just from being in a bad position there. And now it's all in one big group. But there's still no tank. Because that was a great force field with having Zealous to get right on top of them. No retreat for the Hydras. Not they're even trying. And of course, the Zealot count gets a bit low. Looks like Cross is just going to head back again. Doesn't want to lose any of those uh, precious Void Rays or Sentries. Even more Zealots now, though, in the Zerg reinforcements. All the way on this side of the map, just not helping. Now the Zealots have charge. They're, they're not quite as fast as the Hydralisk, but they do 
charge, and that's really all you need. And ouch. Not that much we can do here. Hydra is trying to retreat. It's a very small trickle of reinforcements coming in to help him, just not working on it. In the meantime, we have these ninja bases popping up over here. That should work well. Protoss Observer is still sitting outside in the front there. Not really getting a wind of this. If he plays defensively, he might be able to get Protoss to try and expect uh, economic lead in the later game. But currently his army is just right out there in the middle. Very open. Very exposed. Very badly controlled there. Half the army attacking. Does manage to pull it back, but no. No, you don't really want to take that fight. Oh, oh, and he's managing to lure out some of the Void Rays here. There we go. Another control error on Solid Luck. Part loses the, that the Mothership Core for it. Yes, and a Void Ray. Quite an error, but then these Hydroists caught out in the open. No charge. Ooh, he's going to lose all the Hydroists as well. I mean, the Void Rays were a good pickoff, but you can't lose all your Hydroists for that. Ooh. Well, we're at several Hydroists. <laughs> and that guy just does not want to back off now that the Zergling reinforcements are coming in. Alright, uh, Aethos wants to take it again, now he's, but there's carriers. I really don't think that's enough. If he hadn't been losing Hydroists all game, he'd have had plenty of Hydroists to take out these carriers, that's not a problem. Um, like Void Rays, it's kind of a double effect in this with carriers against Hydroists, just whoever has more. Definitely the more is on the Protoss side right now, so I luck. Ooh, and finally there's, finally there's enough Zerglings to tank for the Hydroists, except that now it's, now it's a big air army. Mutilus coming in from the side, getting some nice probe kills here while the army tries to engage. A little. Really good positioning for Solid Luck there, though. Oh, yeah, plenty of Zealots and nowhere near enough Hydroists getting torn apart by the Void Rays. That's not going to work. In the meantime, back in base with Mutilus crushing off those hot probes. Let's have a look. The workers killed 28, 29. Wow, massive economic damage, and boy, does he need it, having just lost his ground army and still no damage to the air army of Solid Luck. And there he's trying to get away. It's really hard to run away from carriers, though. Hard to run away from Phoenix, but just not that many Phoenix out yet. They don't seem to be pursuing. Another probe. 42 probe kills. And what can he get in here? Ooh, he's going to get cut off by the air army. Ah. Uh, some Mutalists survive. Not that bad. Mutalist, Muta Corruptor. I think that's great against a pure Phoenix force, but Void Ray Carrier? I don't think that can engage. He's going for it anyways. How is it going to turn out? Well, he might get a Corruptor, he, uh, sorry, a Void Ray. He gets one Void Ray for that entire army of Corruptor from Mutalist. Again, way behind the army's killed, trying to come in here and do some more probe damage. Didn't get any. Again, run by on the fourth base, but still no probes there really to kill. And even if there were, the Zealot Warp in great defense there by Solid Luck. So, a massive economic damage at the cost of losing his entire army means that I think this push is going to win it. Four solid luck. We've got some Hydra reinforcements dribbling into the center from all over the map. Twos and threes just getting picked off as they try and rally on the wrong side of the map. Terror rally point there. Should have pulled back. Pick up a sentry. Could have gotten more instead. Carriers just crushing him. Amazing how much damage two, just two carriers are doing here. And, well, maybe it'll be a rally for one last ditch defense. No, no. Solid luck. Being very cautious, doesn't want to go in, and maybe he doesn't realize how far ahead he is. Ahead in army size, that is. Worker count, double for ASAL. All Solid Luck has to do is hold back, and ASAL's back in it. But if he attacks, well, that's a little different. Army supply significantly ahead for uh, Solid Luck. And not only that, there's these carriers and void rays. There would have to be a lot of massed hydralisks in order to sell that. And I just don't see them massing particularly well. We've got some hydralisks streaming in from these ninja bases and the rally point getting picked off by the phoenix no not getting picked off by the phoenix but getting scattered by the phoenix and just getting everything together is going to be a real challenge for us out here now they're getting picked off by the phoenix a lot more easy kills zerglings miss rallying into the middle of the map yep yep that's one scary protoss army and the zerg army still isn't forming up and here's the fight and there's nothing to take for the Hydras again. Zealots going to town. Void rays and carriers easily clearing up the air. And the Hydras just can't quite take down those interceptors yet. So there we have it. Another strong win by Solid Luck. Just crushing that Zerg army yet again. Keeping his powerful air force. And he's got a forward pylon warping into more ground to replace that he lost. Should be able to push in and clean it up. Does he hang back anymore? Nope, he's finally going for it. Nope, he's not. Never mind. Ah, Phoenix in. Maybe now he's going for it. And he's, it looks like he's scouting the ninja bases as well, so there's no hope of a 
uh, crazy on the side of the map come back and oh bottled up in the choke there moving forward oh terrible control picked up crushing victory in this battle by solid luck and there's the gg solid luck beats ace al to give national instruments a stunning 3-0 that's unofficially 5-0 um, but some great games here in week two uh wonderful set of matchups and of course some really nice carrier focused play by solid luck you really see these carriers out here and you use them to great effect so well done and I'm really looking forward to the games next week when Blackberry plays Cerner.